All right, check out what I got. It came from Altronics in Santa Clara, California. Not too far away from me. Let's take a look and see what's inside the box. So I've got some leads, some 1% resistors, alignment and test resistors, miscellaneous parts. There's some binding posts, a couple of alligator clips, an end piece, some feet, looks like. There are two ICs, two IC sockets, and some LED displays. A couple of diodes. Looks like one in 4148s, a couple maybe one in 4004s, a bunch of transistors, a little oscillator crystal down here, and a couple of LEDs right here that's indicated in the semiconductor bag. Some 5% resistors, capacitors, and then check that out. A circuit board, unassembled. Can you guess what this is so far? There is the case. Plastic enclosure, transparent blue. All right. A couple little parts inside there. Let me show you what this is going to be when I get done assembling it. It is going to be the blue ESR meter. This is the Bob Parker design. Now I think this came over from the Dick Smith Electronics, which I believe was an Australian company. Had all kinds of good stuff. Man, I miss them. Anyhow, this is an ESR meter to replace my old analog meter you've seen so many times on my channel. So I'm gonna try this. And now this is supposed to be a very low resistance meter at the same time, measuring down to one one hundredth of an ohm resistance. That's not inductive resistance. I've got a schematic, a parts list, where all the parts go on the circuit board, even some construction details here. Component installation sequence. Installing components. Pictures as you install them. 1%, 5%, semiconductors, capacitors. Miscellaneous parts. Oh, there's where the feet go on the back side of the seven segment display. Test lead connections, how to install the plugs, installing the LEDs for the decimal point. And then some initial checks, some calibration, battery setup warnings, final assembly, and then we need to find a nine volt battery. And then there are some ESR Ratings that they give you, those might be different than mine. Uh, some precautions, maintenance, if it doesn't work, some troubleshooting sequences, some theory of operation. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start assembling this thing, huh? Well, they suggest taking a close look at the circuit board for any defects first off, so I thought I would just show you the board really quickly. We'd go around it Everything looks good from what I can tell. Looks like a fairly good quality circuit board. Bob, December 07. Not really seeing any solder bridges or anything. The traces look very high quality. If you see any defects, shoot me a comment down below, but I think it's gonna be just fine. Now let's flip the board over, look at the other side. They actually have everything laid out as to where it's going to go. 680 ohm, 10K, 470K, 1%, 10K pot, 2N3904, 10K, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I think we are just about ready to start putting this thing together. Man, based on how they laid this thing out, it looks like it's practically going to assemble itself. Okay, now for assembly, I'm just gonna go ahead and time lapse the component assembly and soldering. That'll make it go a little bit faster.
Okay, so according to the instructions at this point, I need to verify that the 5 volt regulator circuit is working before I install any of the ICs. So I have 9 volts connected and they tell me to measure on this junction point between R19 and R20 while pressing the button right here and I see 4.874 volts which is close enough to 5 volts in my book. So let's go ahead and mount the LED displays and the ICs and then we'll see what happens. Okay, I have the unit completely assembled, except for the case, obviously. So now the instructions tell me to go ahead and hit the power button. I do have nine volts coming from my regulated power supply onto the battery connector. It tells me to hit the power button and I should see a dash on the left side display. And I do. It tells me to go ahead and short the leads together and I should see something less than 0.5 ohms. With the lead shorted, press the button one more time to zero the display. And look at that, zero. Now it's telling me to go ahead and get the alignment and test resistors out. So let's start with the 82 ohm resistor. And it tells me I should see 82 ohms on the display. And I'm seeing 77, 78, so now it tells me to adjust VR2, and now according to the print, VR2 is this one right here, until I see 82 ohms. It is jumping around slightly. I think that's going to be normal. Now it tells me to go ahead and disconnect the 82 ohm resistor and connect the 5.6 ohm resistor. And look at that, 5.6, 5.7, absolutely perfect. I love it. Let's go ahead and double check our zero lead integrity at this point. And it says it could jump between zero and 0.2 ohms. The readings may bounce around plus or minus 0.2 ohms due to variations in the lead resistance. So I think that's perfectly fine. So these are the instructions to adjust the low battery warning. Fully clockwise. So just to verify voltage, I'll get the fluke meter out. And we'll test right here at the circuit board connections. I have 5.517 volts. I don't know if I could get it much closer than that. Next, we turn the meter on and we slowly adjust this down until we see a B begin flashing. right there. So next I'm going to go ahead and get it back in the case and we'll get it assembled and we'll test a couple capacitors with it.
Okay, all assembled and ready to go. Let's go ahead and test a couple capacitors with it real quick. So first I'm gonna turn the unit on. I'm gonna short the leads together, press the zero button, and we'll go ahead and test a capacitor with it. So I've got a 4700 microfarad 6.3 volt cap that came out of one of the Magnavox ZV457 MG9s that I replaced as a preventative measure. And it reads 0 0.12, 0 0.13 ohms. Next, we'll go ahead and test a brand new Nichicon, same value. Should be a much higher quality capacitor. And we see 0 0.10, 0 0.09 ohms, much more like I would expect to see. Anyhow, that's it. It's up and running. I certainly hope you enjoyed the build on the blue ESR tester from start to finish. I certainly did enjoy building the kit. I haven't built one in years, years and years actually. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this build video on the Blue ESR Tester. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.